Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tyler Lay, and I am going to be talking to you today about the compounds in hydration. Yes, what you start out with, what you end up with, the things that make up the basic building blocks of concrete. We're going to learn about them today. I'm going to first tell you about details. We're going to introduce them. You're going to see them. You're going to hear about them. And then, and then... We get to actually see them in the wild. We actually get to see pictures of them inside of concrete. I know, hold your breath. Here we go. Hydration compounds. We're going to first start out talking about the compounds and the unhydrated Portland cement. The ones you should have heard about before. We're going to start out with C3S. Then C2S. Then, C3A, do you remember these names? This one's a light, right? This one is b light, right? This one's Illuminate. Then we have C4AF. Then we have CS bar H. Yeah, that's gypsum. And then our favorite thing to be added just for fun, limestone. And some people will say that limestone leads to some hydration products, and we're not going to talk about it much today because they're not that much to talk about. There's not that, that exciting. Now let's introduce to you. These are new topics, new things, things you haven't heard of before. Well, maybe you heard about them a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. These are the compounds in hydrated Portland cement. First one, our friend C S H. That stands for calcium. Silicate. Hydrate. C S H. C S H. The next one. CH, that stands for calcium. Hydroxide, a lot of calcium. Calcium hydroxide. And the next one, we're going to call this one AFT. What? What? AFT. Well, it's an illuminate phase. And it's more commonly known as etringite. And then it's friend, AFM, which is known as calcium monosulfaluminate. Try to say that 10 times fast, right? And then there's another one. There's iron hydrates. And we're not going to talk a lot about iron hydrates today either. Okay? Start out. CSH. Calcium silicate hydrate. Calcium silicate hydrate is formed from the reaction of C3S and water. Or C2S and water. We in modern cements have way more C3S than we do CTS. C, C2S, but both of them form calcium silicate hydrate. And this is the material that gives hydrated Portland cement its strength. This is the material that keeps the outside nasties from getting in. This is the workhorse, the main building block of modern concrete. Now, let's talk about scale for a second. If you were to look at it on about a macro scale, that's about a millimeter, right? And larger, it's going to just look look like a rock. It's going to look like a rock, a white or grayish rock. That's what CSH looks like. But if you look at it on like a micro scale, about a one micron scale, it's going to look actually like coral, like sea coral. Ha! Yeah, I know. I'll show you some coming up. And then if you look down at a nano scale, a less than one nanometer scale, it looks like sheets. It looks like these little bitty sheets, and they actually have water molecules in between them. Pretty crazy, right? 
And it's common, extremely common, to find CSH mixed with other compounds. It's just like coral. Think about coral in the ocean. Think about all the other stuff that lives amongst the coral. It's like a living material, right? It's kind of what CSH is like. Because of this, it's kind of hard to characterize. It's kind of hard to understand totally what the structure and the chemical composition looks like because it changes. Depending on when it's formed, when you're measuring it, how it's formed, how you're measuring it, and under which situation it's being looked at. For example, are we talking about like brand new concrete? Are we talking about distressed concrete? It's a living creature, the CSH. It's always changing. So it's kind of hard to pin down but it's really important. CSH does not have an ordered structure. It's not. So people think of it as like amorphous, almost like a like a, a bunch of noodles going everywhere, okay? Think about these, these sheets just turned in all kinds of different directions, going all kinds of different this way and that. That's kind of what CSH is like on a super duper nano scale. The next compound is calcium hydroxide. Very, very important compound. You know, people would ask me, what's my favorite compound? And I don't know if I could answer. It's like, they're all so amazing, right? Well, calcium hydroxide, it is formed from the reaction of C3S and water or C2S and water. It's kind of like a byproduct of forming calcium silicate hydrate. It's a very weak portion of concrete that forms within CSH at early ages. It's actually almost always mixed together, okay? They're mixed in there. And then it'll also fill in water, it'll form in water-filled spaces at later ages. Sometimes you'll see really big crystals that form at later ages, and you'd say, aha, that used to be a water-filled space that now this calcium hydroxide crystal grew like a balloon to fill it up. Calcium hydroxide helps keep the pore solution pH high. Helps keep the pore solution pH greater than 13. That's like Drano. Ho, ho, ho. This is why fresh cement paste can burn your hands, burn your body, burn your skin if you're not careful. Gotta pay attention, okay? It's calcium hydroxide. It's keeping that pH high. And that's actually very, very important part of durability. We want this. This is a good thing because we actually have to put steel inside of our concrete, almost always, because concrete's not very w strong in tension, and that steel is. But we want that concrete to protect the steel. And this high pore solution pH, it actually forms like a, a layer or like a bond of material on the surface, okay, that keeps out corrosion, keeps out outside chemicals from attacking the steel. So this high pore solution pH, is totally awesome for reinforcing steel. So it's very, very important part of durability. And if concrete's sick or not doing well, you'll notice that it's missing calcium hydroxide. If calcium hydroxide happens to be dissolved um, from lowering the pH, that could be from acid, it can be from outside water coming in, all kinds of things like that, then it'll leave holes, holes, voids where it used to be. It makes it easier for outside nasties to get into our concrete. Actually can lower the strength as well. And I like to call calcium hydroxide the human shield of concrete. It is the first thing to go. When there's a problem with concrete, calcium hydroxide starts to die off first. If you're ever investigating concrete, you're worried about how's it doing, it's, it's, you can check on calcium hydroxide. It's kind of like looking at your red blood cell count in a human. Okay, it gives you an idea if they're sick or not. If you could zoom in, well, I'm sorry, if you look at calcium hydroxide on just like a large scale, it looks like a bunch of white powder. This is just supposed to be like a little sheet here with a big pile of white powder on top of it, right? White powder, okay? But on, on the micro scale, if I could zoom in on a micro scale, it'd look like a bunch of hexagonal plates. Yeah. Then on the nano scale, zoom in even more, then it would look like an ordered crystal. Yeah, you can pick it up with x-ray diffraction, and that's a great way to measure calcium hydroxide. Moving on to the last two compounds. The first one, AFT, or etronite. That's 
C6A S bar 3 H32 for you cement chemistry freaky deeks like myself. It is formed from the reaction of C3A and gypsum and water. They're needle shaped crystals and they're responsible for some of the initial stiffening of concrete and also early age strength gain. Okay, Etronite can be a good thing. And they absorb water as they grow. And there's a significant volume change when that happens. This, is, this initial stiffening, this initial set is oftentimes attributed to etronite crystals growing and interacting with one another. They're kind of the first things that start to touch. At later stages um, of hydration, the etronite is actually consumed to produce... AFM. We'll talk about AFM in just a second. Yeah, pretty nuts, right? And if you could zoom in, if, if you're on like a macro scale, like just like as big as this pencil, it would look like a big yellow large crystal. That's what large etronite growth looks like. Big yellow large crystal. If you could zoom in on a micro scale, on about a one micron scale, it looks like a bunch of needle shaped crystals. Sometimes they, they look like a bunch of, uh, Pine needles, almost. Pretty awesome. And then on the nano scale, again, they're ordered crystals. So you can pick this up with x-ray diffraction. Okay, they are crystalline material. Now, let's move on to our friend AFM. Calcium monosulfo aluminate. The one that you don't want to have to say fast too many times. That is C4AS bar H12. You're welcome. It's formed from the reaction of C3A and etronite, AFT, and water. And this material forms after about a day of hydration. It's not around early on. It's around in the later stages. The etronite turns into it, okay? And the formation depends on the sulfur in the solution, okay? That's what it all depends upon. When the C3A starts to react, it says, hmm, how much sulfur's out there? And that determines where I'm gonna form etronite, or calcium monosulfate aluminate. Pretty awesome, right? If you can zoom in on a micro scale, it looks like a bunch of rose rocks. Yeah, rose rocks. A bunch of like, it looks like flowers, all right? And then on, on the nano scale, on the less than one nanometer scale, again, there are ordered crystals, so you can see them, you can, with an x-ray diffraction. They, they're, they're, they are ordered. And this is a very interesting plot after Tennis and Jennings where it starts to, it tries to give you an idea. And this is an idea. I, I, I think this needs to be modified a little bit. All right. But this is a, this is a, a shot at explaining and kind of giving you a visual interpretation of what hydration is going to look like. So if you like graphs, then this might help you. So this line is supposed to show porosity. Okay. And this is showing that the porosity is going down as, as these other hydrates are coming up. And this just says amount. It doesn't say exactly how much. It just gives you kind of a relative scale. And this gives you time. It's supposed to be in log time down here. I don't know why. It just is. And it's showing here calcium silicate hydrates growing. Calcium hydroxide goes up and they go up together. And then you can see our etronite goes up and then goes down. As soon as etronite starts to go down, what happens here at monosulfate, right, is going up. And also our iron hydrates are going up as well. So this kind of gives you an idea that how all these things are tied together, okay? Gives you an insight into hydration. Don't worry, a lot more coming up in just a second. And this is supposed to give you a relative volume percentage of each one of these versus the degree of hydration. Now, let me let you in on a little secret, okay? Most concretes don't really get above about 75% degree of hydration. They just don't get there. It just takes too long. So this gives you an idea, though, that when you start out, you, you have a lot of pores, okay? And then over time, they go down. And this is supposed to be calcium silicate hydrate, the CSH. And you can see it's going up. And it's a large volume of the ultimate hydration product. And here's calcium hydroxide. And it grows at the same time as CSH does. Why? Because they're related to one another. 
CSH is forming, you're also forming calcium hydroxide, just in a lower amount. Now here's our AFT, AFM. This is our etronite calcium monosulfo aluminate mixture, and they go back and forth. They don't try to break them out. They just say, you know what? They grow. All right. And here's our gypsum, and it's going down. It leaves early. Here's our C4AF. It, it leaves. It's not that big of a deal. Here is our C3A as well. As it hydrates, then so does the AFM, the AFM, the AFT and AFM increase. And then down here at the bottom is our C2S and our C3S, and they're the ones that 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 kind of feed the hydration of CSH and calcium hydroxide. And then here's limestone at the bottom. Not doing much. Doesn't change much because it doesn't do much. Now notice. It's 75% hydration. This is where I, I said most people hope to get to. Notice that there's still leftover C3S and C2S. Yeah, that's right. They're still floating around inside of our hydrated cement paste. It's not like everything reacts. Some of the stuff that we put in that we want to react, it doesn't make it. There's not much we can do about it either. So I've been talking about details, right? I've been talking about how all these things come together, but now we get to see what they look like. Oh, baby. I'm going to start out by showing something you know. You might not realize you know this, but you do. This is a human hair. Yeah, I know. A human hair shown with a scanning electron microscope. We're going to be using a scanning electron microscope to look at all of these images. Now, human hair is about 50 microns across, okay? And I give that to you for a sense of scale because what I'm about to show you first is about half this size. This is hydrated cement paste. Wow. Crazy looking, right? It's about 30 microns across. This image is about half the size of a human hair. This is kind of like a cliff. This is a fractured surface. So it's been broken all the way through. And imagine looking at the edge of a cliff that's been broken off. That's what we're looking at inside of our cement paste. Pretty crazy, right? Well, up here is air. Air. Yeah, this is like an air void. All right. And down here is the paste itself. And let's learn about these different areas. First, let's talk about calcium hydroxide. Those are those hexagonal crystals. And I know it's kind of hard to see. I'll show some of the pictures coming up. But this one kind of poking out of the mountainside here is a calcium hydroxide crystal. And this kind of flat shaped here is a calcium hydroxide. And this is a stack of calcium hydroxide crystals. All right? Now, this is CSH, calcium silicate hydrate. See this black area? That's a void next to it. It's kind of, it's trying to close in or fill that up, okay? And do you remember what this looks like? Coral. I've shown you some coral. Doesn't that look like coral? Pretty awesome, right? And it's not just there. You can see it's here and here and here and here and here and it's everywhere. It's all over the place. This is the predominant phase that's formed during hydration. This is why concrete has strength is because of these things. One of the reasons. Let's talk about AFT. That's, that was etronite. You can see it kind of poking out here. Poke, poke. But here it's also interdispersed. It's all in these little voids and areas all the way around here. These little crystals that growing everywhere. Those are the etronite needles. And here's some AFM. This is this rose petal. It's kind of hard to see, and I'll show a better picture coming up. Here's another cross-section. You can see the AFT needles, the etronite needles. Here's a cleave of calcium hydroxide here on a fractured surface. And this is calcium silicate hydrate. Again, this little hairy looking, corally looking stuff all the way around, all over the place. Here, 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 up here. Awesome, right? Here's another zoomed in picture of etronite. Look, looks like the Emerald City, right? From the Wizard of Oz. Look at that, sticking up in the air. Pretty awesome. 
Here's our calcium silicate hydrate again. You can see it all over the place. Here, 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 all over the place. And the black area, those are the voids. Now this is an image from Terry Romlikin. Terry is no longer with us. He was an awesome concrete petrographer, awesome concrete person, and we miss him every day. This is one of his images. And he's showing an air void here that's actually filled in with atronite. All those needles, those are atronite. And here is calcium hydroxide sticking up out of the air void. And see this, see this, see this material? This is CSH. See, we're kind of zoomed out. It looks like a bunch of rocks, doesn't it? Well, it's also been polished. Here's an image of atronite, really zoomed in and close. Pretty awesome, right? That needles growing from all those different directions. Here's another image from Terry. These are etronite nests growing all the way around. Look at that. Growing from those central spots. Here's another image. Etronite needles shown here. Here's a calcium hydroxide crystal. This is in a void. So again, you can see the calcium hydroxide crystal grows and fills up that space. Now here, here's our AFM. See, it looks like kind of like a rose or like a flower. If you, if you haven't seen a rose rock, here's one for you. It happens to be the state rock of Oklahoma. Go Oklahoma! And here's another image from, from, from uh, Terry Romlikin. It's calcium hydroxide. This is a great way to end. Terry, you're missed. Thanks for all you did. Thanks for your, your love and your efforts and uh, for the images. Take care, man. Bye.